This week, two AMD Polaris-based GPUs, Microsoft gets a little lazy with their enterprise support, and a crap load of stuff about video RAM and Intel chip sizes. I'm David Wolf with Tech Power Up News. We've got a little more info regarding AMD's Polaris architecture revealed at CES just recently. While doing an interview with VentureBeat, head of the AMD Radeon Technologies Group, Raja Kaduri confirmed AMD is developing a pair of 14 nanometer FinFET GPUs based on Polaris, which is AMD's fourth gen of graphics core next. The chips are spoken of with the names Polaris 10 and Polaris 11. Very sneaky, my friend. Raja Kaduri discussed some new previously undisclosed bits about the chips, like a newly designed front end, which you might call a bus. New geometry, <laughs> new geometry processors, display controllers, and a multimedia engine. This week was pretty tasty in the way of VRAM news with the finalization of GDDR5X by Jetic and the beginning of 4GB HBM2 memory stack production by Samsung. To simplify everything down as much as possible, GDDR5X has twice the potential bandwidth of GDDR5 at 10 to 14 gigabytes a second while maintaining the same pin layout, reducing research and development costs. While Samsung's 4GB stack will feature 32GB a second, which is about 7 times faster than current GDDR5 chips can muster, and at twice the bandwidth per watt, although with a completely different layout, making it more expensive to develop with. But, Samsung's HBM2 is already in production, while with GDDR5X all I can find is it might be produced in sometime in the next 6 months. Although there have been differing rumors of NVIDIA adopting either HBM2 or GDDR5X for Pascal for the past year, I think it's probably a safe bet that HBM2 will be their memory of choice if the company plans to hit the market in first half 2016. And AMD have already confirmed plans to use both GDDR5X and HBM2 in their Polaris architecture GPUs. My guess is the HBM2 model, most likely the flagship, will be the first. If for some reason the fab process of the CPUs you buy is of utmost importance to you, you might be disappointed to hear that Intel's first 10 nanometer chip codenamed Canon Lake is planned to launch sometime next year in 2017, and the company will produce two more generations on the same process afterwards, 2018 being Ice Lake and 2019 Tiger Lake which is kind of a cool name. It's not until 2020, four years from now, that we'll be seeing five nanometer chips from Intel. Speaking of five nanometer processes in 2020, TSMC recently announced that things are looking good and seven nanometer silicon chips should be entering production in first half 2018, followed by the, I5 nanometer, or the five nanometer process in 2020. I'm getting my fives mixed up here. In the meantime, TSMC has revamped mass production processes for its 16 nanometer FinFET node and ups to claim 70% of global 14 nanometer and 16 nanometer market share by the end of this year. Hope you don't plan on future enterprise support for older versions of Windows. Microsoft announced recently in a blog post written by Terry Meyerson, Executive Vice President for the Windows and Devices Group, that support for Windows 7 and 8.1 enterprise systems will be non-existent with two future CPU platforms, i.e. Intel's KB Lake, AMD's Bristol Ridge, and Qualcomm's 8996 system on a chip. The systems may run as usual on these older versions of Windows, but should any issues come up, Microsoft won't implement any fixes, and only will update 7 and 8.1 Enterprise with critical security updates for the platforms. I can see cutting off Windows 7 as it's going to be 7 years old this year. Crazy to think. However, Windows 8.1 is just barely edged over 2.5 years old, and undoubtedly still has some life left in it. Also, upgrading a large amount of Enterprise PCs could be an astronomical cost for businesses, as the free Windows 10 upgrade does not apply to Enterprise and RT editions. And in the end, as it should be clear to everyone, it's a money grab. Gotta leech those little businesses for all they're worth. I mean, it's a corporation, so this comment is kind of, duh. <laughs> That's all the news I have for this week, but there's more every week, so stick around. Also, make sure to check out our website and you'll find lots of great articles on stuff I talked about today and other stuff, like MSI announces the Gaming 24 all-in-one desktop, KFA2 announces the GeForce GTX 970 EXOC Sniper Edition graphics card, MSI intros 970A G43 plus socket AM3 plus motherboard and more. I understand that with just a few minutes of news you won't find all the info you need or you might have a question. Why don't you head on over to our forums and ask us that question? Plenty of helpful people to help you out. Did you watch this video and think, hey, I wanted game news? If I got the channel for you, check out our sister channel, Next Power Up. They've got awesome game reviews and weekly gaming news. Clicky clicky.